Let's now uncomment section four and see what to be developed. Okay, select the section, control forward slash. Okay, so now you can see that the only thing that does not compile is something like here, entry and entry. Again, this on the, so here we have an assignment over here. On the left hand side of the assignment, we are trying to declare a variable called E1 and usually capitalize now. That means it's a class name. Entry cannot be resolved to a type. That means entry should be a class that you you will uh, we, we uh it should be a class that we will develop. And also on the right hand side, we are trying to call uh create a new object of type entry. And this is the signature. It is indicates the signature of the uh, entry constructor. In this case, the first one should take anything like a string, like an A. And then the second parameter should take some objects over here. You can see if you move your mouse over, uh, if you click on BD01, you can see BD01 was declared before as a birthday. So that means we are passing an object reference. Remember, we learned about call by reference. So if you pass BD01 over here, that means we are passing a reference of type birthday. So that means the constructor for the entry class that we're going to create is going to be of the following uh, parameters. The first parameter is going to be a string so that it can take a double quote string like an A. And the second parameter is going to be of type birthday so that you can take a object variable like BD01, like what is declared over here. Okay, hopefully that's clear. So now let's create an entry class as before. Now let's do that. So right click, new class entry. So now if you, as soon as the class is uh, created, you will see that, let's go back to the uh, tester over there. You can see that this now left hand side of the assignments over here compiles because we just created a class. But the right hand side still does not compile. You can see that move your mouse over, it tells you the constructor entry of signature string and birthday is undefined, right? It is uh, exactly as I explained. So now let's create a constructor there. You can see after we created the entry class, we got even more things that did not compile. The constructor, we have something accessor get name and also get birthday. Well, you know, similarly, remember how we created the get month and get day for the birthday class. So now we're going to have uh, the get name and also get birthday. That's what we're going to do. Okay, let's try to do that. Okay, let's now go to the entry class and define that constructor. Public entry and then we have string and then some name and also we have birthday, call it birthday. Okay, and we also need to have the uh, two accessors get name and get birthday. Okay, so now the name should be indicative enough to tell you get name should get a name of the record in case, uh, in for example, A over here is a name, and also BD01 is an object. When we say when we say get birthday, it should really give us a birthday object. For example, like a BD01. Okay, and then we can say, once we get a birthday object, we can call the to string method on that birthday object so that we can just print it out like a January 1st or February uh, 13, etc. And remember, we have already defined the to string method. So we don't have to worry about this part in particular. Okay, so now we just have to define get name, get birthday, and also we need to make sure the two values over here that we pass to the constructors uh, uh, namely the string A and also the BD01 objects are properly stored into the attributes. Okay, so now let's declare the attributes. So now let's say string name and also birthday, which is long class, and then birthday. And over here we can now say uh, string. We can say this dot name is assigned to name and this dot birthday is assigned to birthday okay so now I want to create a two accessors get name and get birthday that one let me show you something that you can generate using Eclipse 
let's say I want to generate two accessors for the name and birthday. Of course, they should be private for encapsulation purpose over here. Now, if I choose these two attributes over here, highlight them, right click, and then go to source. And then you can say generate getters and setters. And now in this case, we only want to generate getters. So now you can expand this, expand this. I want to generate get birthday and also get name. Okay. Let's say they were going to appear after the constructor or okay, after the birthday, if you like. Okay. doesn't matter. Okay. Let's say we have birthday. We have, we got attributes, name, birthday, followed by their uh, accesses right away. And then you can say, okay, you can see now over here, that's defined for you. Okay. You can feel free to really type by yourself or you can uh, just use Eclipse to generate for you. Make sure you save it. Okay. So now let's see what the expected output should be. So now we are in number four over here. You can see, we can see uh, this is our expected output. So you can see over here, we got get, uh, this is get name. This is get birthday, right? Okay, let's go back to our tester over here and let's see what we have. If you simply just execute this, you can see that this is get name, this is get birthday. However, this one over here, it seems to be printing out the address of the entry objects, which is E1 over here, right? You can see that E1.toString. So pretty much like how we handled how to have the correct output for BD, for example, BD12, the two string and everything else about birthday objects. So now since I wish to also override the two string method for E1 for the entry class, okay? And let's see what the expected output is. It simply tells me, I should say the name was born on a particular birthday. You can see this part here comes from the name attributes. And this part here comes from the two string on the birthday objects, right? So now let's see how we can do this. I will show you the naive way and then I'll show you something that's actually more OO. Okay. So now we can say to string, choose that. And now we can simply say return the name plus was born on and then plus, let's say over here, we got birthday here. We can say uh, over here, Actually, you have to do this by OO because, of course, you, if you want to do it very naively, you can say based on birthday dot get month. I can it can be either one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, up to twelve. In that case, you have to do the case analysis again, like how we did for the birthday class, right? Over here, you can see the two string method there in the birthday class. We did do some very ex, uh, thorough case analysis over there, but we don't have to do this analysis again. If you have such duplicate, that means your code smile, uh, smells. So we don't, we don't want to do that. We want to treat this to string method from the birthday class as a helper method. Let's see how we can do that. Go back to the entry class. You can simply say as easy as this. You can say birthday dot to string. Right? You can see that, notice what we're doing here. In order to define the toString method for the entry class, we are trying to print out, we are trying to use the attributes of the same class name over here. And we are also trying to use the attribute birthday in the same class. However, we are calling the toString method that was defined on the birthday class, which is here. And that method there does the thorough case analysis of the month which can be January, February, March, etc. right? So we're calling the toString method for other class in order to define the toString method of the current class, okay? That's very, very typical in OO. You just want to reuse the, the code by calling methods when appropriate, okay? Let's go back to the uh, tester there and see what we have. Okay, so now we do have A was born on January uh, 11th. And that's exactly what we are expecting on output, okay? Let's convert this also into JUnit test. And then we are done for this particular section. Let's go to the test over here. Okay, let me just copy this over here and then I will convert from print line into assertions. Let's go to JUnit here. So that should be test 04, okay? Add test. 
public void test 04. And then I'm going to have over here. So we got entry here. So we got BD01. Let's just you reuse it. So the way I create the objects are just consistent. So I can just copy and paste. That's no problem. BD01 over here. And now I don't like any print line because I want to automate everything as assertion. So I can say assert equals. So now E1's name should be A. Okay. And also I want to say over here, I want to say assert equals over here. So that's E1 that get birthday, which will give me BD01, the objects. I want to make sure it's January 11th. Okay, I'll put it here. January 11th. Okay. Okay, just make sure I don't have typos over here. Okay, so now let's go to the next one. Make sure separate by comma. Okay, I think that was the issue. Okay, so now finally, I want to test. So for this one here, I test the uh, equals method, uh, the two string method on birthday. Now I want to test the two string method on entry. Okay, it's different. So now I can say assert equals. So now I want to say A was born on January 11th. That's E1 dot two string. Okay. Let's also, we already verified the uh, string screen output with our eyes. Let's now test this converted version into J units and see if everything works. You can see every time when I run a J unit test, I basically run every test, all the five tests I've accumulated so far. But when I, when I was doing the this particular section there, you can see that I, if I simply just execute a tester in a console application, if I really want to do, I need to compare. You can see this is okay. This is a gen, uh, 1, 11, January the 1st, you know, etc. And just very, very tedious and error prone process. If you simply just want to do your testing by console application, as you can see, we got 35 different sections for this particular exercise here. If you have accumulated 35 tests in J units, it's much, much more convenient if you can just execute all tests at one go automatically.